Start eight eight two 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 zero one seven. We have passed through an anomaly where everything seems to be built with cubes and other shapes. Spock, it appears to escape the anomaly. We will have to do battle with robots in this dimension. I've heard of this place, Captain. There is a cyborg named Ataribot who could probably help us. Uhura, see if you can contact this Atari bot. Hailing frequencies open, sir. Hey, this is Atari bot, and today we are going to be talking about cosmetics, and we're going to take this baby out for a spin in a little bit. But first, I want to tell you guys about these cosmetics. They are going to have new functionality to them. Not just visual effects, but a taunt that goes along with the visual effect that will be an audio clip. Um, Dev Jam number 16 went over this and uh, they talked about pretty much uh, everything that was going to be done with it. And I'm going to go over that with you guys right now. Um, basically we're going to go over to the website. Cosmetic CPU. For a long time now we've wanted cosmetic parts to be more widely used in Robocraft. Aside from some very creative use of specific cosmetic parts to create some awesome looking art bots, they aren't used as much as we'd like. So we're going to address that with some exciting changes to how cosmetics work in Robocraft with the introduction of cosmetic CPU and taunts. More on that later. In our next update, scheduled for launch on Thursday 24th August, we'll be adding a new cosmetic CPU pool in the game. Here's how it'll work. Every robot will have a cosmetic CPU pool. Putting a single cosmetic part onto a robot will remove one PFLOP from the robot CPU pool. When the number of cosmetic parts added to a robot exceed the available cosmetic CPU pool, the PFLOPs from the robot's regular CPU pool will be used. Removing cosmetics from a robot works in the opposite way. If cosmetics on a robot takes more PFLOPs than available in the pool, regular CPU is decreased. And only if no regular CPU is used for cosmetics, cosmetic CPU is decreased. The available cosmetic CPU a robot has will be displayed in the robot info panel in game. This is what the info panel is going to look like, guys. Uh, you know, you have your blue, green, and red bar, but then on below it, you're going to have cosmetic CPU. And for each piece of those you use, it will be also taking one PFLOP from your base CPU. You know, and that's fine. As far as I understand it, anyway. It goes on to say, so how much cosmetic CPU will robots have? Well, this depends entirely on whether or not you have premium on your account. Non-premium players will have a cosmetic CPU pool of six per robot. This is enough for a complete mask. Premium, not lifetime, premium players will have 12 cosmetic CPU pool available to them. Now, if you have lifetime, Oh, you're in, you're 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 set. It's good. Lifetime players will have 24 cosmetic CPU pool. Now, how did these different CPU pools affect robots uploading to the CRF, the Community Robot Factory? Depending on whether a player has premium or not, players will see a different CPU for a bot on the CRF. For example, if a lifetime premium player uploaded a 2000 CPU robot equipped with 24 cosmetic parts, other lifetime premium players would see that it has 2000 CPU robot. Non-lifetime players would see it as a 2012 CPU megabot as it passes through the 2000 CPU threshold for megabots. With the introduction of the new cosmetic CPU pool, we will be making some changes to how cosmetics work and how they're obtained. We really want to make cosmetic parts desirable items in Robocraft. Something that makes players go yay when they discover them in crates. All cosmetic parts with the exception of league badges will no longer be forgeable. Cosmetic parts will only be obtainable via salvage reward crates. Any robots in the CRF that use unforgeable parts will not be visible to players who don't have those parts in their inventory. All cosmetic parts 
excluding specialty weapons and movement parts such as carbon-6 variants and bat wings, will now have zero mass and zero health. For a list of which parts will be removed from the forge, click here. And if you go to their website, you can click on that and it'll take you to the list. Um, I also went through it in my last Battle Talk video. And they say, I want to clarify that this change doesn't mean the end for cosmetics in Robocraft. We'll still be adding new and exciting cosmetics to the game. Art Director Rick has a list of crazy cosmetics he'd like to add and will reveal more about what those are closer to their release. So yeah, that's uh that's, that's this is good news people, I think. It's going to be cool. Um like I said, if you go to my last Battle Talk episode, I go over all the uh the removal of all the cosmetics. So you guys if you haven't gotten them, you know, there's still a little bit of time you can go buy some from the forge now if 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 you um you want to do that. That it's it's a good thing to do in my opinion. Um the next part of this goes on to say with the introduction of the new cosmetic CPU pool mechanic, we sat down as a team and thought about how we could make complete cosmetic masks more meaningful in RoboCraft. We wanted players to embrace complete masks on their robots and make them a fun and enjoyable part of the game. Also, with the removal of the forge for cosmetics, we wanted to make them even more special when you obtained a complete set of parts to make a mask. So alongside the cosmetic CPU pool, we'll be adding a new taunt, visual effects, special effects combo, into the game. Every mask in RoboCraft will have an associated visual effects and sound effects that is triggered via a key press in battle. And I'm going to show you guys this, the sounds here in a little bit. But um, in the meantime, I'm going to keep telling you what the, this here says. It says the following mask will have unique visual effects as special effects taunts. The Eagle Mask, the Rhino Mask, the Alien Wear Mask, Honeydew Dwarf Mask, Overwolf Mask, Ninja Mask, U.S. Football Mask, the Mech Mask, the Scary Mask, Sabertooth Tiger Mask, and Cockpit. Taunts can only be triggered if a player's robot has a complete mask that has been assembled correctly. When a mask has been correctly assembled, a visual effects will show in both the garage bay and mothership. So you'll actually, when you put it in your garage bay, you're going to see it as well. You know, that's that's pretty cool. Um, you know, and I don't know why they had they felt the need to list all the masks here because, or why even I read them all because it's all the masks. They did, they could have just said they all the mask, but anyway. It's pretty cool, and it's cool that they they have hinted towards they're gonna you know they said they had a whole list of ideas, so guys I mean be prepared to uh, see some new mask parts come out. But after this update, the only way you're gonna get those new parts is by winning them in crates. So wow, what 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 are people gonna do? They they're gonna be have, they're gonna have to play their butt off. To get those parts so in a way this is kind of good for the game because it encourages more players to stick around and play the game more and more often um, let's get let's go on I'm gonna show you guys this the um, sample part here they put in the game this is the uh, eagle mask they used for example it says correct placement and incorrect placement in battle, robot's taunt is triggered by pressing the associated key, which is Q by default, which used to be the spotting button. I guess they found a new use for it. When a taunt is triggered, the robot's mask will spawn its taunt effect and sound. If a robot has multiple masks present, then one will be picked at random when a taunt is triggered. So, yeah, there basically you can see what it's going to look like. This is uh, what I guess it will look like when the taunt's activated on the eagle mask. If you go to the website, you also found a link to SoundCloud. We come in peace. Well played, pilot. Ah,
Now, as I promised, we're going to take out the Enterprise and see if we can uh, explore places and all that stuff they do. Captain Kirk and uh, Spock will have some little banter or something. Anyway, I built this thing, and it actually works. I've noticed now you can build almost anything, and it'll work. It's hard to build things that don't work nowadays. But I don't know if that's good or bad. It just is what it is. But, you know, there we go. Let's do this. I don't know these people, but thank you guys for uh, showing up and being in this video anyway, even though you may not know it. Capture the All right. Let's see here. We're on uh, Tihonium Canyon, Mars. The battle for Tihonium Canyon has begun. Captain. Here's we have passed through an anomaly. The remaining enemy team entered into the battle. Spock! I can see that, Spock. But, Captain, it would be illogical to just go backwards. Shouldn't we go forward? Captain! We're running into things backwards, Captain! I had to use the bathroom, Mr. Scott. Sorry. When I came back from the bathroom, like oh crap, the game's done. <laughs> the captain has captured the point furthest from your base. You have captured the point. You have captured Look at that. Nearest to your I can't base. believe this thing works. It does work. I actually uh, I had a previous version I'd taken out with my clan. Programs of Argon. Uh, Check out uh, Raz 5.13 and uh, talk to him if you're interested. We do uh, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> but uh, I think it's primarily uh, an Australian-based plan. I, I, I joined them because their their time zone was more of when I played. And now I kind of just play whenever I play. But, uh, but I still like to play late at night on the U.S. side, which is more uh, daytime for the Australian side. So that's how it works for me. Look at that. Lost in the cell. Captain! We've lost our warp capabilities! Scotty, fix it and right away. Disconnected. Get it fixed, Scotty! I'm doing the best I can, Captain! I know my voices are just awesome. <laughs> sometimes I do good jobs, sometimes I don't. You have captured the point where this tornado fades. I don't I don't think I'm doing this like that. Yeah. This is the slowest robot in the world, I found out. It does not move that fast. It moves backwards pretty fast for some weird reason, which is candy. Watch with watch, watch how I handle these guys. Yeah. Aerofly. The bad thing is, is that when you lose that rotor. You're, you're just you're on the ground. You're grounded. But it's not all done because I still have other weapons on here as well. Especially to take out the little guys. 
those proto seeker guns are great for taking out small robots because uh, here's what's going on there are people that are saying oh weapon energy weapon energy so if i build a small robot i can like really boost up my my you know the power of my weapons you know it's not about weapons it's about charging faster boost the damage I'm getting, I get things wrong if I change it, but anyway, it's about, it's about how much more damage you can do with lower CPU. And um, the problem is is that when you go to that lower CPU usually to, to be able to put out that damage, I mean, those I understand the concepts. I used to build that way with uh, weapon energy at one point. You know, I was trying to see they lost the guy, so this was kind of an unfair match. <laughs> I'm just sitting here. I'm not even doing anything but keeping them in their base. I'm like, you know, if I just keep keep their players in the base, you win. Because they don't cap. And they usually like to go for the far. They, they, they go for their near point first, you know, generally. You know, in Battle Arena, you can get away Your with these kind of things. Um, in League Arena, the players are much smarter. So you don't you don't get away with doing this kind of stuff. Especially higher league arenas. You know, higher league arenas, they get they get serious. They get so serious. It's it's difficult to use uh, psychology, which is more of what I try to do. I think I, I think I try to psycho psychologically mess with people. Then I rather than actually uh, go straight for kills. I just Proton see that low CPU guy. I just I wanted him gone. He almost dies right in this field. It's crazy. The snipers try to get it too. The sniper seems to be missing a lot though. Don't play a sniper if you're gonna miss a lot. That's what I guess. Copton! We're dead! <laughs> Scotty! I realize that! It would be illogical to fly right now, Captain. As you don't have a soft Defend the protonite core to prevent the enemy from Scotty! You're a miracle worker! I know Captain! That's what I do! I don't know what I sound like. I don't know how I make Scotty, uh, my voice. I don't voice Star Trek characters well. I don't know why. But as you see here, I am, uh, just taking out, um, whatever I can. I'm just sitting there. I just watching the, the percentages. I'm like, oh, I can't let them have those few. And I'm like, eh, now they're to zero. Okay. Annihilator Thank fully God. charged. Firing weapon in three, two, one. Oh, well, I'm, a, I'm a terrible person. <laughs> what can I say? Victory! This was more of a fun match for me. I just wanted to fly the Enterprise. But like I said, it wasn't until I added hovers to the back of it, you know, that it started working better and this and that. It's got some some tricky movement parts and some construction pieces to make it a little more durable, but it works. Somehow it works. And somehow I think I'd gotten top score in this match. Again, I don't know how. I did, yep, top score. There it is. That's about it, though. I didn't get, like, top kills or anything, I don't think. No. Yeah. I just did a lot of, uh, did a lot of damage. Did a lot of, uh, it was just a combination of things that got me the top score at that time. It wasn't so much I got it out of kills or I got it out of objectives. I just pretty evenly rounded, you know. I got a lot of objectives and I did a lot of damage to other players, you know. But like I said, it wasn't a very fair match, you know. But it did get to show off my enterprise and let me do my uh, my Star Trek voices some. And that's fun too. It's all fun. So somebody loses an eye, then it's not so fun anymore. Every once in a while I get stuck on the screen, and it takes it a little bit. I don't know why. It, it acts like it's going to do something. Eventually it will. I think I lose connection with the server a little bit from time to time. And um, if you do have that problem as well, where you get disconnected, um, it seems like you get disconnected every two to three matches. Here's my recommendation. Restart the game every two matches. Yes, it's a pain in the ass. I know. Sometimes your teammates will forgive you for it if you're in a, in a party and you want to 
um, be doing um, like league matches, but you don't want to do a league match and disconnect from your party. Don't don't join a party if you know you disconnect a lot. And if you do know you disconnect a lot, do like I say, just try it out. Try to restart your game every two matches. If that fixes it, great. Until a solution's found to why this happens to some people and why this hap doesn't happen to others, I don't know. Um, best I could tell is it seems to happen more to people who are further away from uh, Europe. Anyway, that's all the time we have. Thanks for watching. Here's some stuff to click. Take care. Build well. Bye.